Yeah, uh, well, uh, I'm Terrence Ferguson. Welcome back to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Yeah, so. Uh, uh. Ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, Terrence Ferguson. Welcome back to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Uh, yeah, so Terrence Ferguson, funny name. Pretty good. Today's the third anniversary of Norm Macdonald passing away, ladies and gentlemen. We want to pay our respects to one of the greatest legends of all time. One of the main, main people that never, never stopped believing that OJ did it. Norm Macdonald, ladies and gentlemen. One of the greatest comedians of all time. One of the greatest yeah. SNL alumni of all time. Our hearts go out to you, my friend. You will always put a smile on people's faces. One of my favorite bits you've ever done is make sure that everyone knows that your best friend, Matt Egret, was a 9-11 and Holocaust denier. It's the funniest shit in the world and the funniest bit to do on your friend. I absolutely love it. That's so, good, ladies and gentlemen, our hearts go out to you. When I think of Norm, I always think of, even though it's way later in his career and he's done so much iconic shit before it, Yeah, he does that joke in Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee with Jerry Seinfeld, yes. the Patton Oswalt yes, joke. Yes, dude. The hypocrisy uh. about Bill Cosby or something. That is one of the, he's the king of the setup. Like the yeah. long yeah. setup, like three different jokes to get to the actual joke. Like he is the, he was the king, the absolute king of that title of the, comedy. The fucking one of the best jokes, stand up routines, is him doing the, uh, what is ID short for? I identification. It seems, mm. identification. It was just, it was just so fucking the way he got the crowd to just like, what the fuck? Uh, Norm Macdonald is an absolute legend, dude. It was, it was devastating to hear he passed. Um, I've been a fan of Norm Macdonald for years, so my friend, truly, this one is for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dougie McDoubles. Welcome back to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Next to me is the greatest co-host and best friend of all time. I have Ray McFlurry the second. We're back in the cave, ladies and gentlemen. Back for a topics episode on episode ninety. How you doing, man? Is it 90? It is episode it 90. It is 90. Yeah, it is. 10 episodes left before we get to the episode 100 extravaganza. I am so excited. It's a big episode, man. I got some cool stuff planned for Ray and I, and he has no idea, and it's going to be It's going to be good, excitement. I'm excited. Um, We have a lot of stuff to cover. We do. And Seth Rogen. <sighs> Seth Rogen made some statements recently. Has he? Yes, about Warner Brothers. Good or bad? Probably yeah. bad. It's bad. Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers. <laughs> Stupid question. Go yeah. on. And he, it's not a happy, Ray. Okay. He's not a happy camper. I'll tell you what. Tell me more. Oh, that was smooth. Thank you, man. I that appreciate it. That was smooth. Go ahead and pull out the old episodes real quick. Go to the suggestions just so I can uh, quote it correctly. Because if it's one thing they're not going to do, Ray, is hurt the character of Seth fucking Rogen. Now, Seth Rogen has officially stated that Warner Brothers and HBO have officially dropped the ball and fell asleep at the wheel with everything that they have been doing movie-wise. Definitely. He said, and I quote, Harold in the fucking crayon? I mean, excuse my French, but what the fuck? Did Seth say that? I thought this was the Danny McBride quote. Nope, it's Seth, Nick, it's Seth, Seth Rogen. Seth, Seth said that one. Holy it's shit. Seth Rogen. The, but all three of these oh, are Seth Oh, wow, Rogen. he said that. Okay. So all three of these are Seth Rogen quotes. Seth Rogen also said, oh, I'm sorry. No, Danny McBride said oh, okay. that. Okay, I thought they were all Danny. Okay, yeah, no, the first one is Seth. The first, no, the first Holy two. Holy shit. Yeah, he says, the first one is they fell asleep at the wheel. Yeah. They, they, they dropped the ball. And the second one is Harold in the fucking crayon. Are you are you kidding me? Um, And then Danny yeah. McBride. Which is so real. Because, which is absolutely. Yeah. But also, I want to point this out. Also, they made Harold in the Purple Crown, but also, Seth, you made Sausage Party Foodtopia. Well, that's. So. Yes. Yeah, you made a lot of good shit, but slow your roll a bit. Time out. You slow did do the bit. turtles in Super Bad Pineapple Express. Therefore, yeah. you are you're on Invincible and the boys. You're doing good yeah, shit. Yeah, you did this. Is you're the doing end. good shit. American Pickle was an incredible, serious show. I'm very impressed. Like you know, knocked up All, everything you've done. Incredible. However, you did Sausage Fest Foodtopia. Don't forget that, bud. Yeah. Um, we don't. We don't forget. It's nowhere near Harold and the Purple Crayon. But come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. The yeah. first one was the Sausage Party movie was fucked up and great, but the show, you needed a show. You know what I mean? Um, but also it makes sense. That, like, you, you worked at HBO and they were just like, no, we're not doing this movie. So you're like, <laughs> all right, whatever. Bug. Uh, but yeah, even Danny McBride says Seth Rogen can't get Pineapple Express 2, but Harold and the Purple Crayon gets $90 million. Can you imagine? That's so real. Yeah. It's so real. Hurtful. What What comedy they could make for 90 million fucking dollars. Oh my Could goodness. you imagine? I'm almost positive they the give budget that, for uh, Pineapple Express was like 25 to 30. Yeah. That's what's missing, dude. And Vince Vaughn, we talked about Vince Vaughn talking about it too. That mid-level 
mid-budget comedy is just dead. That does barely it, exist anymore. Nope. It barely exists. And it's fucking devastating. They would rather give Harold and the Purple Crayon $90 million. They would rather give Borderlands $131 million for it to make 40 in the box office uh, or whatever, how terrible it did. Morbius did better than it. Yeah. Think about that. Jared Leto's Morbius did better than Kate Blanchett, Jamie Lee Curtis, Bobby Lee, Jack Black, uh, the other girl from the Barbie movie, um, and Kevin Hart, which I understand Kevin Hart, but also go fuck yourself. Dude, movie Jack- studios are just... I don't know. Yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, 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 no. Don't not Dude. not for this. Don't apologize for that, yeah. man. Fuck them. I don't know. Movie studios are fucked up. Like Borderlands tanked hard. Like what was the official numbers on it? It did. Oh, I. Thirty one million in its theatrical run on a hundred and fifteen million dollar budget. Oh my lord! And insanely bad. And uh, you know, theaters and or uh, movie studios and like streaming giants. They're they're like so fucked up now because Beetlejuice two just came out. Um, our review will be up on it now. We went and watched it. Great movie. It's made two hundred and fifty million dollars in the box office already. Warner Brothers they did not want to make Beetlejuice two a theatrical release. They pushed for it to be a max only movie. That would have been terrible. Yeah, it would have been terrible. And Tim Burton said so. He pushed so much for a theatrical release. They cut the budget by forty seven million dollars. Shut because the fuck up. The original budget was one hundred and forty seven million. If it dropped on max, he wanted a theater run, so they dropped it to under one hundred million. They made two hundred and fifty already. Like movie studios and these streaming motherfuckers, they are so screwed up in their priorities. Like. A Tim Burton, Jenna Ortega, Winona Ryder isn't going to make back $100 million? Are you, you kidding? Are you out of your mind? Yes. You're telling me Wednesday Adams is going to be the iconic role to play the daughter of Lydia from Beetlejuice? And you're going to tell me, oh, we wanted the HBO Max original. Yeah. No, eat my nuts. Yeah. I don't want to get... You got Penn get... Badgley Jr. in the movie? Come I, on, I, bro. I, yeah, dude, Penn Badgley... Yeah, dude, thank you. Thank you. Let's... I looked at his IMDb. I think I put him on our list to DM. That's like his only role ever. I'm pretty sure it was like he may have done like one episode characters in some shows, but like that is his biggest role ever. And I genuinely thought it was D.H. Pin Badgley the whole time. Without a doubt. The whole time. And also, God damn, was he attractive? He was a good looking dude. Like he was right up till he went to hell. But... Right up until he you know went to hell and tried to take Jenna Ortega's life. You know what I mean? Yeah, just was, like, Michael, was, Michael Keane was like, "Listen here, Playboy, you that ain't was that a little fucked up." <laughs> Whittle, I think that was a little crazy. <laughs> I think he would have went a little bit too far now. Oh, please keep those in, dude. God damn it, um, I just wanted to okay. cover the Seth Rogen stuff no, first it. because that is that is blasphemous. Because here are just a couple of yeah. things that we could do. Okay, number one, Super Bad two. Bill Hader and Seth Rogen are still cops. That simple. That could be, still be a nice little cameo. Pineapple Express 2. Knocked up 2. Um, 40-Year-Old Virgin, the sequel. You know what I mean? It could be a different one. Here, like, yes, we're in a world where everything needs to be a sequel to get made. Well, no, but I'm just even, saying Seth Rogen projects that sure. deserve a sequel compared well, definitely. to Harold and the Purple Crayon. First. I know what you're saying, but yeah. even, like, you could just give Seth Rogen or a Vince Vaughn or some of those guys that have made these their careers off these mid-budget comedies. You could give them $50 million, $90 million, and just say, make something funny. Yep. Like, that's what they used to fucking do. You know what movie, That's what they used to do. You know what they did for Tag? They gave them $26 million. You know what it made? Mm-mm. Almost 200 Dude, that's what's missing, is it that had, mid-level shit. Ed Helms, Jake, or Jake, or Jake Johnson. Yes. Uh, It had... Um, John Hamm. Yep, John Hamm was there. John fucking Hamm. Um... Hawkeye's Jeremy Renner mm-hmm. and Hannibal Burris. They had Isla Fisher yeah. as Ed Helms' crazy hot wife. Dude. Like they had all these crazy cameos for stuff like that, just for a buddy, like a buddy movie. You know, like you remember Let's yes. Be Cops with my, with the one of the Wayne's bro or one of the Wayne's siblings and Jake Johnson. Yeah, Jake Johnson. Yeah, Halloween. yeah, yeah. Such a good movie, dude. dude. Yep. Um, that's what we're missing, man. That's what we're missing. When he, give us twenty three Jump Street, damn it. Uh, you know, it's just that simple. They're giving us Harold and the Purple Crayon. Can you imagine what Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill could do with $90 million? I couldn't imagine. Dude, I want to see it, man. I I'm tired. S- We're in like a fucking dark ages for, for movies right now. I don't know. Yep. I don't know. Did you see... Uh, so we're in September. Yes. Uh, this Wait. is this is the month that uh, the Penguin drops. Yes, it is. Uh, and I saw some news. Actually, fun fact, mm-hmm. this week alone, we have the first week without Kite Man. But we have Agatha all along. Yep. And we have the premiere of the Penguin series dropping this week 
technically we're scheduled we are recording in advance because we have a backlog and we are professionals and getting shit done because do. you, there is a not a better backlog. podcast in arkansas than doug and ray and saturday morning cartoons baby you think you think we get these roach tip fingers for nothing <laughs> this is art baby we do this shit for real life so okay. I, I saw some news about the penguin yes um <laughs> and i don't know how real it is because it feels fake because they changed the name of Oswald Cobblepot in the Penguin to Oz Cobb. They dropped. They said it was too unrealistic. I don't know if this is true. I saw so many major things Outlets. tweeting this out, though. It feels fake because there was a whole movie and a bunch of merch that already have his name on it, like yeah. Oswald Cobblepot. Yeah. And for this show, I saw so many DC, like major yellow checkmark Twitter accounts, like news outlets, tweeting that, like Matt Reeves has changed his name in the show, like dropped the, uh, the the bull, bull pot. Yeah, it's Oz, Oz Cobb apparently Oswald Cobb, which is just weird. I don't know. It may be fake. I may sound like an idiot right now for even bringing it up, but uh, I just saw that like this morning on Twitter. It could be more mafia esque, you know. It could be more Whatever. underground related. Who knows? But I'm that's down. that's dumb. I'm down for the show. Whatever. That's dumb. You don't. Oh yeah, the show's gonna be incredible. Yeah, this is the stupidest thing they've done with the penguin lately. I'm not, and here's the thing: I'm not mad with it, but no. like, it's infinitely stupid, stupider to change his name to Oz Cobb versus changing a female penguin's name to Oswalda. So much stupider to drop the bull pot. Yeah, and so Oswalda is so much better because it's yes. it's a comic book show, so yeah. it's almost like you can do whatever and it'd be yeah, okay because it it's a comic. Doesn't have to be grounded. It's a fucking name. Tell me all does everyone have to be John Smith? You know what I mean? Like what? You're telling me a man can dress up as a bat, but he can't be Oswald Cobblepot? Is that what you're telling me right now? A bat vigilante is more realistic in this scenario in this franchise than him being Oswald Cobblepot. Oh, That's more realistic and logical. Dude, the more we talk about it, the more it feels fake and I feel like I got got. On no, this dude. Topic. No, I don't because know. here's the I thing. Don't know. But with what we just said with Seth Rogen and Warner Brothers being asleep, who fucking knows? If you're right. right. No, yeah, you're right. It could you're easily right. just be like, oh, God. We're going to name Oz Cobb. Oz Cobb. Yeah. What? <laughs> Why? Because. Yeah. Because. Exactly. The fans will get it more. <laughs> oh, will they? Shit. Will they? Will they? Oh, go fuck yourself, Warner. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about one good thing they're doing right. Oh there's there's God. at least one thing on our list they're doing right. They're damn, damn yeah. right. Yeah, for Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, Warner Brothers is re- re-releasing the Blue Beetle movie for six days from September 20th to the 26th in select AMC theaters. Won't be ours, because ours doesn't exist anymore. Nope. And we have to go to the Malco, and that feels like a slur coming out of my mouth. <laughs> that That feels nasty coming out of my mouth, not going to the AMC. That's shout out Blue Beetle I would love to watch this re-release but you shut down our AMC this motherfucker. he said that feels like a slur coming it out feels, of my mouth it feels wrong it feels like we're cheating on AMC without every time doubt. we go to Malco with, I hate it without a doubt I it feels terrible it. it feels absolutely horrendous it, until they get a good trailer for Malco it's AMC for life it's bullshit have- dude dude cause number one like there's no Nicole Kidman number two there's not even the all around you thing <sighs> which is just part of it that's just, just always been part of it. It feels mm. that's what it is. That's what's been taking myself out of the the movies the movie experiences is where I've genuinely just like not it. I'm not feeling the encompassment of yeah of the AMC home world. And here's the thing: another thing about AMC that I love compared to Malco, it's always. Just, like Malco, it's too quiet. The movie's too quiet. At always. AMC, it was always going to be about five volume too loud. Yep. Like it was always almost too oh, loud like, like to be Dune? bearable, but just like Dune was crazy Dune loud. Dune was other Dune was so loud it was clipping the speakers in yes. that AMC. But I love it. That's yes. part of the experience. 100%. You know? Like Transformers did the same thing. Fast and Furious, same thing. Indiana Jones did it too. Yeah, everything. Yeah. But it's just part. That's AMC. Oh the, my goodness. We that's miss it. AMC. We, we miss, miss it. AMC. We miss you. Uh yeah. So shout out Blue Beetle. Um, you know it. It did so poor in its original run. It could do pretty close numbers. Who fucking knows? Who knows? I hope it does well though. It was a great ass movie. I rewatched it on my ride to the beach this summer, and it was 
just as satisfying the second time watching Vicky Cord get her comeuppance from Parallax. Yeah, that was fucking I, I won't, or Carifax. Carifax, yes. Carifax. Parallax. Is, Parallax is Hal Jordan. Yes. Uh, uh, and I I watched it recently with Lexi, and the movie was so damn good. It's so good, dude. And I I love the. Here's the thing, Danny. Fuck you, Danny. Oh, uh, Danny, <laughs> Danny hates Blue Beetle. Yeah, I know. I he know said you said Blue it before. Blue Beetle is a Mexican movie for white people. And it hurt me so bad that, like, it took oh, my breath away. No. Like, it hit me so hard. I went, I like, like it I, punched you in the stomach. I wanted to just, like, <laughs> what the fuck? Did you just say to me, dude? I wanted to rip his mustache off. Like, that's how, angry, that's how angry I got at him. And he wasn't oh. even in the room. Like, he, I was just, ah, fight the fuck. Don't it. you say that shit again. Um, and I told my mother oh. that. Mm. And my mother was like, how fucking dare he? Who the fuck does and he think he it is? It showed the cultural difference from, mm-hmm. like, long California, mm-hmm. Hispanic culture, and Southern Texas and Texas culture. Because yep. Southern Texas culture, what I have found in my entire life, has been a lot of Spanglish. And that is corny compared to L.A., <laughs> In California, yeah, Hispanic yeah. culture, I am. It is a whole different out. culture. Yeah, it is a whole different culture. And I didn't. And the thing I didn't, I didn't think about it. I never thought about it um, until the E Money. E Money brought it up, right? He said the Blue Beetles from El Paso. I never thought about the movie t- took place in the Keys, yeah, in, in Florida. Mm-mm. I never thought about that, but I don't know. That never crossed my mind, but Did it is. The movie, his origin takes place in the Keys, like in Florida. In the movie, yeah, yeah, yeah Or in the yeah, movie, yeah. But, yeah. but like, his, his comic origin is like always like El Paso. Yes. Or like, okay, I yeah, think yeah. even Young Justice, he was from... El Paso. El Paso. Yeah, he's yeah. from Texas in, the, in Young yeah. Justice, yeah. That's why but I was that, so excited. That, never, that had never crossed my mind until right now that the, they had changed his origin. Yeah. But, I mean, it makes sense. Warner Brothers dropping the ball one, once again. Makes sense, whatever. You know what I mean? Good right. ass movie. Hope it does. Hope it does good on re-release. You know it's gonna do incredible on its new release. <laughs> I'm so excited, dude. I'm ladies so and stoked. gentlemen, it's been officially announced that the script is done for Keanu Reeves to come back as John Constantine for Constantine Day. Dude, it's also, done and it, it will be very R-rated. And every time we re- announce any <laughs> sequel, Doug will now do a day. Thank you to Todd Phillips and the Joker for ruining the Joker. This is fun. Uh, for yeah. Arthur Fleck or whatever the fuck his name's gonna be. I'm pretty sure that's Arthur. Arthur Fleck is the Joker. Arthur Curry is Aquaman, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, whatever. Either yeah. way, you're gonna you bring it in. Oh, oh. you bring Lady Gaga in doesn't mean you need to do. You know what I mean? It's that simple. Do. Uh, no. Dude, I love this for a couple reasons though. This is great. Uh, because Keanu Reeves is back in Constantine two after what twenty something years, and we get Constantine two before. Marshall Holly will ever get his Blade movie. Oh, like, without we're, we're, a doubt, we're getting in the R, very R-rated Constantine before they're ever going to be able to the make the R-rated, R-rated Blade. demonic vampiric monster mm-hmm. DC movie before we're getting the yes. first R-rated vampire movie it, with Marvel. I so I, I know we, this is Elseworlds, but I'm gonna praise James Gunn, baby. It's not Elseworlds until James Gunn's just like, nah, dude, it for nah. sure can't be. If it's a two, there's no way. I don't know. I don't know. It's Elseworlds, but I'm giving it to James Gunn, baby, and James we trust. You mean like how Constantine was the only, one of the only people that remembered the other timelines? Oh yeah, that's true. And Peacemaker is one of the only people that remember this timeline. That's true. He could try to bring in some uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths <clears throat> anime, and he'd just be like, "Yeah, hey, I remember too. My place was so evil, you know." Damn, I like that, James. If any, hey, we said it once. If anybody, we said James. it from episode one to episode ninety, baby. In what? James Lee Trust. If anybody, it's James. Oh, you know who probably greenlit Constantine too? James Gunn. Because he was probably like, yeah, I'm going to have seven scripts already written. But if y'all want to take your own thing, go ahead. Y'all go ahead. No, no, no. no. Can can Keanu come back, please? Yeah, we have him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, write it, write it, write it, write it. Write it. Go ahead. I love it. I love how er, Keanu Reeves went on an interview with Fallon or Colbert before COVID talking about Constantine. Yeah, Um, I think I remember it. And he was talking like, I would love to do another, like, he was. You got a script? I let's it's, do. It. Sometimes that's what it takes. Literally, Channing Tatum and Jump Street, Twenty Three Jump Street. Yep. He was like, "What do you have one written? Let's let's, let's go. I'll, I'll start right Sometimes now." Sometimes that's know? what it takes. And man. the fact that he was like, "I want it to be R rated." Yep. You're telling me that we got him as Duke Nukem, as Keanu Reeves and Speed, as Shane Falco and the replacements. 
Bro, who's doing it better than Keanu right now? Let's name his last few roles. Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the fucking Hedgehog. Let's be very John clear. fucking Constantine. John fucking Constantine. Oh, John another, Wick. Another John? Jonathan Wick. Uh, oh, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Um, Great. I love it. Who's You're, doing it better than him right now? Channing Tatum. Well. Dylan O'Brien. No. Oh. God damn you. That was forced. That was no, nah, dude. He's in. I just saw another trailer that came out this morning for his new HBO show, and I just saw another trailer, uh, promo like that on the ads on YouTube for hit for Saturday Night Live, the show, the movie, which we will oh, yeah, be yeah, seeing yeah. whether Ray wants to see it or not. He's <laughs> going to watch it with me because I will be in absolute awe. And I watched his Dan Aykroyd impression. Oh yeah. And I was, I had goosebumps. Like I showed you, dude. Yeah, yeah. Like the I am Davis song, and I was mm. like, "Look at this." I was like, That's, uh, "Okay." His, uh, I'm down, uh, man. I'll watch uh, it. Uh, uh, like his little, like the laugh he does, the chuckle that is, it is iconic to Dan Aykroyd's S- SNL. Mm-hmm. Hot damn, bro! I'm down. Man. Uh, I, I, I truly believe this movie is going to be like top five movie of the year. People are gonna be like, "Yo." Dude, I'm down. I'm is not... SNL back? And then they'll watch an episode, <laughs> and they'll be like, no, no, oh, it's no, not. maybe back, not. Back then was great. Yeah. Little weekend update, though. Woo! Yeah. Michael Che Christmas. Yeah. Michael Che Christmas is when they change the, the jokes for each other, and that's oh, the best that part of it. Yeah, those are the best. Those the fact that they called Scarlett Johansson Sammy Davis Jr. is one of the funniest uh, things in the fucking world. God, this, no. Then Michael Che was like, yeah, your wife looks like Sammy Davis Jr., dude. It's just so good. It's too good. Oh. Some more DC news here. DC it says, news, baby. More de- oh. Matthias Schoenarts is reportedly in talks to play the villain Krim of the Yellow Hills in the su- upcoming Supergirl? upcoming Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow movie. I've got to say, I don't know Krim of the Yellow Hills. I believe he was the main villain of the whole comic run. Really? I, of that planet. I don't know Supergirl, period. That's one I'm really, I've never really I, read or I'm, watched or anything. I haven't read a lot of Super, Supergirl comics. However, I have read plots of what this whole synopsis was supposed to be. It was supposed to be the, her not coming to Earth first. Mm-hmm. It'll be like her on another planet. Right, try it like her, before she comes to Earth. Yeah, yeah, she and, shows up in a pod as a, like a teen, and like yeah. she got knocked off okay. course. Or... So a future, like a planetary Mad Max Furiosa, Chris Hemsworth role, kind of. Okay, how he is not the like father role, but she wants to kill him by okay. the end of the movie. Okay, it's kind of like that. I'm down. Um, I don't know this actor, but I'm down. I'm let super. Me see a picture of him real quick. The Supergirl. It kind of looks like uh, Glenn Powell. I have never seen. He looks like Alexander Skarsgård from Vikings, who is Bill Skarsgård's older brother, the guy who plays oh, okay, it. Okay, okay. And Zeitgeist stayed in the know. Crow movie. Actually, real quick, the Crow fucking sucked. Canning, I know you're watching this. Maybe it's fucking 20 minutes into recording, so probably not. But the Crow sucked, and I'm sorry that they had to redo that to your fucking franchise, buddy. Truly, I'm so sorry, man. If it's one person I know that has been pushing for the Crow for decades, for our entire friendship, it has been Cloud. And my man, they let you down. I'm so sorry, buddy. It was so bad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, he's not watching this. No, not a chance. Uh, not even the slightest. However, you know, we're on the podcast, and one thing we like to do is shit on the rock, so let's take another opportunity. Perfect. In a very roundabout way. Perfect. Um, James Gunn has come out on Instagram threads to officially say that Shazam 2 is not canon to the DCU. Don't know who needed to be told that, um, but it's Schneider not fans. canon. Uh, Snyder fans had to be told that. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess people so, who thought the hierarchy for the for the DC universe was about to change forever. Those people. Yeah. Well, let me get into why the Rock sucks. Fuck the Rock. Huh. Okay, so somebody. I got a list. Let me tell you. I guess somebody on Threads um, had posted the post credit scene of Shazam Two, where Harcourt and Economo showing up to recruit um, Shazam to the Justice Society. Right. That's the post credit scene, and somebody posted that and tagged James Gunn. And said, does this imply, because Economos and Harcourt are showing up from Peacemaker, which is DCU Absolutely. canon. They said, does this imply that Shazam 2 is canon to the DCU? I'm so confused. Um, and he says, no, you don't need to be confused. It's not canon. Um, I don't know now or then what Harcourt or Economos have to do with the Justice Society. So that whole cameo and shit was not James Gunn approved. He, it was just his characters from his show, but they just shoehorned it in. And let me tell you why it's Fuck the Rock. Because originally that was supposed to be Hawkeye and Cyclone recruiting Shazam. But The Rock 
wanted absolutely zero ties to the Shazam 2 movie. Like, he wanted no fight, no connection, period. He literally blocked... Um, uh, Zachary Levi? He blocked uh, Hawk Hawkman. Is yeah. That right? He blocked Hawkman and uh, Cyclone or whoever from showing up. That's why it was Harcourt and Economos. And that's why the DCEU is a fucking mess. Like, that's why it's fucked The Rock. In a very, very roundabout five minutes later way, but... Yeah, so there's these chances them too. Of course, it's not canon, but yeah, that's why that scene shows up in it. If you're confused at all, he wasn't lying when he said the hierarchy was going to change forever. Man, you really, you really threw that in the ground. You really oh, CIA that all the way through that bad boy, didn't you? You fucking, you rampaged that that shit, didn't you, man? I, you San Andreas and skylined that for some reason. They're two different movies. You know, it, for shame, Dwayne. Honestly, it's not about drive. It's not about power. It's about James Gunn being better than you. Eats my ass. That's bullshit. That I might have to take another panic or or anxiety med for that. <laughs> That's bullshit. Dude. That genuinely frustrated me. Like, why, Ray? Why? Oh. I don't get it either, bro. Fuck the rock. You know what I don't get? We'll get out of DC before I just go on a fucking 50-minute tangent on The Rock. You know what I don't get? What's that? Sony. And here's Tell why. Tell me more. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Venom in the Last Dance officially came out, The final one of the final trailers, and I am beyond excited for this movie. Don't get me wrong. However, if it's the last movie for Tom Hardy to play Venom, why are you bringing in Null? Why are you doing the multiversal Venom? So, what? Why? 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 You get three for all three movies. Shame. Shame. You know why? Because it's probably not going to be another R-rated fucking Venom movie. You can kiss my ass for that. For shame. For shame. You see what Deadpool made? Imagine we got an R-rated Venom movie. Dude. For shame. All of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, has been rumored and announced that Norman Reedus is going to play Null. Okay. It's the last one in the Sony franchise. Who gives a shit? You could have gave anyone else the voice. It would not have mattered. You could have gave it to fucking Paolo Bancaro from Orlando Magic. You could give it to Peter Dinklage. You could have gave it to anyone. You could have given it to Javon Armand. Shout out my dog. But how dare you bring in Norman Reedus to ruin this when you know damn well he said be a ghost writer. For shame, dude. Are you shitting me? You're going to bring in Noel, the last movie of Venom? What? I'm appalled, Ray. It's kind of crazy. It's it hurts. Noel is the leader of the symbiotes. The creator. He's like the king, he like the god ma- emperor or something, them. isn't he? Yeah, like he, he's he, the a big fucking deal to bring in the last damn movie. Yep. Yep. Good job, Sony. We get symbiote rats, so we're supposed to be happy, I guess. Uh, I saw reports. Uh, there's a lot of X Men talk going on lately. Um, it says Kelsey Grammer has revealed he's had at least some conversations about returning as Beast again. Yes. Um, obviously, he was in the post credit scenes in the Marvels, um, back as Beast. My father saw that in the past week and a half, and he called me and said, Bubba, was that Kelsey Grammer? I said, yes, sir, it was. Hell he goes, yeah, it was. What's that mean? I said, I don't know yet. They're not Oof, making another who one. Who knows, goes, dude? All right. Wasn't bad. I said, no, it wasn't bad at all. It was a pretty damn good movie. Pretty I respect- good, I love the Marvels. I liked it. I hated Brie Larson. He goes, yeah, I don't really like her as Captain Marvel. I said, yeah. He goes, you know who they could have done better? I said, no. He said, oh, uh, old girl from Eternals. I said, who? He goes, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I said, Angelina Jolie. He goes, I would have watched four movies of it. <laughs> she's got, she's a much better actress. I'm like, oh my God. Hell yeah, dad. That's this sick. He said, especially, hell, the first one, it brought her in the 90s. Who's one of the biggest women of all time? Angelina yeah. Jolie. No, that's true. Logically, that that's, would, that's, true. that's good. He goes, yeah, this is damn good one. All right, Bubba, I'm, about, I'm heading back to work. Oh, I just want to call him. I was on my break. <laughs> to call about that. Fucking hey, so shout out my papa. Uh, but yeah, man, I Kelsey Grammer is the beast. Great. It's great. Zero issue. And it. he loves the beast. And like he, he loves it. playing it. He loved it, and like, he didn't have to be in the suit this time. He, oh man, good for him. Yeah, I would love for him to come back. 
Yeah, like that's two guys. Like that's only had two actors, right? In live action, it's yep. Nicholas Holt and Kelsey Grammer. Yep, both fucking A plus. Yes, both actually, kind of yeah. like Magneto in live action. Like you don't, it just haven't missed. Ian McClellan and Michael Fassbender, right? Yeah, let's be very clear, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the early or the rebooted X Men franchises were not that good, but I want to be very With those clear. those castings. But I want to be very clear. Ooh. Okay. Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, and Nicholas Holt. You guys Bro. kill your roles. Yes. Very, very incredible. And also the kid who played Nightcrawler. Um, Absolutely. Because Alan Cumming did a way better job than him, in my opinion. Um, because we got more of an or a little bit more of a backstory with Kurt. But man, that kid was perfect. Hot Good damn, shit. that kid was perfect. I liked it, man. Um yeah. Zero issue with uh with some of the other casting they can kiss my ass. I didn't like Evan Peters as Quicksilver. Sorry. No. Um and that's fine. And that can still be one of the most iconic slow mo scenes of all time. Oh, that because, is yeah. that is the greatest scene to show so speedster yeah. uh abilities of all time. Without right. a doubt. Um I, I didn't think Evan Peters was that good of a Quicksilver because in my eyes he's Sokovian and he needed that. Yeah. You know, Aaron yeah, yeah. Taylor Johnson was better. Mm-hmm. But Evan Peters got more screen time, was able to be better, if that makes right, sense. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't a better better. one, but had a better chance. Did he come back in the Wanda show? He did. But as not like a weird thing. As a actor under a spell. Right. And yeah, so he just played Quicksilver as just like a quick huh? And people yeah, thought yeah. it was, it was like a Halloween costume or something. Yes, that? yes, yes, yes. Okay. Well, he showed up as it for a couple episodes as and his real name was Ralph Boner. Fuck yeah. Yeah, he was like under witness protection, and that's who was secretly there. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. I never watched the show. Yeah. So it was just, eh. Um, uh, also. Well, while we're on that. Yeah. Let's talk about Agatha. They dropped all of the episode dates, man. Give them to me. Give them to me. Okay. September 18th, episode one and two drops. Damn right they do. Uh, September 25th, episode three drops. October 2nd is episode four. October 9th, episode five. October 16th will be episode six. Wait. Are you telling me there's more than six episodes? There are nine episodes, my friend. Shut the fuck up. I know. Episode seven comes out the 23rd, and then October 30th, they drop eight and nine, a two-parter. Yeah, so Agatha fans, you're going to be eating until October 30th. It's a Halloween. Damn. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're dropping it for Halloween, I guess. That's what it'll be. the craziest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Well, Dude, Agatha, I, I have high hopes for this show. I... I uh, it also might just be my huge, tremendous crush for Catherine Hahn, but like you have talked about that a lot, oh my, dude. She's every, so beautiful. You say that every time it comes up, and you're not wrong. It's just so consistent. It and cracks me up. She has the most beautiful voice. She plays some of the best, dude. She would be the greatest, like mom. Like I can only imagine how great she is as a mother if she has kids. I don't know enough research, but she is just she is gorgeous. She is talented. She can, dude. Her voice is so beautiful. She sings. Oh my God. I love oh my Catherine Hahn so much. Marry me. Um, <laughs> something that I never thought we would have is another what if. Yeah. Because season three is going to be terrible. But also a comic run anymore. This is anymore, a comic run. Yeah. We haven't had the comic run in about a decade. <laughs> okay. of the comic book what if. Um, and now we're getting Mickey Mouse and the Kang were the Fantastic Four. Yeah. So it's like we got our first look at what if. Mickey and friends became the Fantastic Four. Okay. So. Goofy is. Oh, that's fucked. Because Goofy's taller. He should be Mr. Fantastic. And I already know Mickey's the main character. So he's Reed. And Mickey is Reed. Because Minnie's going to be. Mickey, uh, Minnie is, is, is Sue. Sue. And, oh, that's uh, terrible because Donald the, is the fucking thing. Donald then. is the thing. And then. Is this Goofy? Goofy is the human torch. Is that Goofy? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Goofy is the human torch. I don't like that. Um wrong casting. Yeah. Who is the who is this villain? I think Pete is a villain. Yes. I don't know who that would be in the Fantastic Four is verse. It the blob? But, oh, maybe so. Maybe. Yeah. So I don't know. It's written by Ricardo Secchi and Steve Belling with art by Lorenzo Pastrovecchio. Comic releases in January. Hey man, it's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm down for Dude. it, but also like, whoa, bro. They Marvel saw Turtles, Naruto, and they saw they, they Batman. You know what I mean? Scooby Doo went with Supernatural. Yeah. They're like, we gotta try yeah. something. Dude. They we said, gotta, we're they said, we gotta do 
what was it? We got to do Avengers Predator or something. Yeah, or dude. Avengers versus the aliens. Yes, or something. dude. And we got to do Mickey and the Fantastic Four. It's that simple. We it's have crazy. To. I'm down. I love it, I'm dude. Down. I don't know. That means Daisy's blind in this. Okay. Daisy Duck is the thing's wife is blind. Or oh, the, okay, Alicia, okay. the new one, is blind. Uh, That's <laughs> great. The implications, bro. Yeah, dude. Who knows? Man, I, let's stay on the Fantastic Four because as good as that is. They how fucking dare they? How their release date already they? is bullshit. They're not all already not gonna hit it. How dare you? Because first of all, yes. ladies and gentlemen, they announced it. I don't know less than two months ago that everything, and they showed a small clip yep. that they were trying to put together, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna release it next year, probably the summertime, thinking June." And people were like, "Who the fuck do they think Dude. they are? Yes. What? Uh, we've already got behind." James Gunn already finished rapping, and you guys finally released a little bit. Oh, my God, dude. Who do you think you are? To now, the Fantastic Four, I guess the, the director and Marvel, they are in talks of moving the release date same day same as day. the Superman movie by James Gunn. Yeah, so they're going to move it from like the 25th to the 11th or whatever it is. Which is already not going to hit. Already not going to hit. Like, how are you possibly talking about moving it up? That this just, is a Christmas. You're dropping this in uh, December of 2025. It just blows my mind, dude. I can't. It hurts my soul. The audacity. The, uh, the audacity know. to come in James Gunn like that. How dare. In the gall, James Gunn put, puts out a post. Oh, yeah, no, I give my uh, VFX artists at least, you know, as much, double mm -hmm. the time they need just in case. we. Have to, I don't reshoot shit. I'm better than them. And Marvel's like, well, we had to we had to stop this and do this. And Daredevil, we took out the whole first script because the first four episodes, he was just doing lawyer stuff. He didn't have a suit yet. Um, you know, Foggy and everyone, Nelson, they weren't going to come back. You know, it's just like, what? You know, so it's just for shame. A lot of for shame in this. I am uh, livid, to be quite honest with yeah. you. It's, it's, it's bullshit. It hurts my fucking heart. It is bullshit. I don't like it disrespected fuck them <laughs> fuck them right you're not dropping this you're there's no way you're not delaying this huh <sighs> you know watch dogs watch dogs one of the coolest games of all time yeah very got, cool game got a movie we talked about this probably episode 40 really yeah we talked about it a couple a couple episodes ago Already rap filming. Yes. Starting on post production. Yeah, they wrapped their uh, rap filming. It's post production. We'll it's get coming that. out, man. Yeah, we'll get that before Blade. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's it's amazing how quickly it filmed because I don't think it was forty. I think it was like two months ago we talked about it. Maybe it really wasn't that long ago because our clip from it is kept getting views and likes because of the news that it wrapped filming. Like oh, it kept yeah. popping up again. Hell yes. Dude. So it really wasn't that long ago. <laughs> so the filming really went quick. Like, I don't know. I, the movie or the game, I definitely watched the let's plays of it back in the day. Oh yeah. Never played it, but yeah, it's a very interesting concept for a movie. Like this is a video game that could make a cool ass movie. Oh yeah. And this I mean, is a movie that you can give 90 million to and it easily yeah, make another yeah. 200. You know what I mean? Unlike Borderlands. Yeah. Shit. I'm down for it, man. Starring Tom Blythe and Sophia Wilde. Like, yeah. Wait, say that again? Tom Blythe. Oh, hell yes. He's from the Songbirds and Saints movie, yes, right? Yeah, dude. That's right. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm down it's going to be it, great. Man. He was a great actor. He's, yeah, he was I'm a great actor. for it. Let's fucking go. Um, okay. Do you have something to announce to the class, Ray? So, October, we get a new Dragon Ball show Dragon Ball Diama. Right? Let's go. It's coming out October 20th or October 11th, 20 episodes. Um, Stephanie, oh, how do we say her name? Stephanie Nadolny, okay. the English voice actor of Young Goku in Dragon Ball GT, is reportedly reprising her role in Dragon Ball Diama. So she's coming back. So I guess a different Goku than we've had in a long ass time because it's usually Older. adult Goku. Yeah. And it's Stephen Schmel or whatever the guy's name is. I can't remember his we're Goku's getting, name. We're getting a young, Sean, Sean. a young, dumb Goku. A pre-licensed Goku. Yeah, so yeah, we're getting the old voice actors back. Our voice actor back. That's cool. I don't know. I'm stoked for the show. It's going to be a little different. Uh, there are some things I don't like about it. It's very chibi looking. Chibi. Oh. Instead of young. Like, we've seen young Namekians before. Yeah. And they didn't make Piccolo look like a young Namekian. They made Piccolo shrunken. 
you know, chibi style. But a lot of the other ones look look good. I'm excited for it. Okay. It'll be good. Oh, goodness, ladies and gentlemen. Regardless of HBO and Warner Brothers uh, dropping the ball and stuff, you know what they did do right? What's they that? They greenlit a Tim Robinson project. And I In this am... day and age, that's good news. <laughs> yeah, dude. In this day and age, come on. Dude. The hot dog skit is one of the best ones of all time. Yeah. Everyone's close our eyes. And get out of here. Yeah. One of the more underrated shows ever, Detroiters. Oh you know, goodness, just fucking dude. fantastic. And I think it was that show called I Think You Should Leave. Yes. Like that is just like it was so viral. Every clip, yes. every skit was viral every on every social had a, media. Had a, had a TikTok from it. That yeah. Went every it was so yeah. From so yeah. funny. I love it so much. I'm down for any Tim Robinson, dude. He is so fucking funny. Yeah, so this Tim Robinson, it is he's gonna be the executive producer and star in it. It's gonna be called the chair company. It follows a man who has an incident at work and unravels a conspiracy. Very Tim Robinson like. Let's uh, go. And if that's that's just so Tim Robinson. He, yeah, I do. Incident at work and unravels a conspiracy. Oh, that who makes me so happy. I'm so stoked for that. Um, the the man and myth behind Dune. Yes. The director behind Dune is now directing a movie about Cleopatra. Yeah, it's in the works. Yep. And who does he get the star? One of the biggest, hottest actresses of all time. Not Anna Taylor Joy. Zendaya. Zendaya. Damn right. Yeah, I'm stoked for it, bro. I'm I think stoked. It, I'm he's, al- he's already said Dune Messiah is his last movie in the franchise, and he's handing it off, whatever. Uh, Cleopatra is in the works. That's his next project. Yep, good. I'm stoked for it. Good for him. That's uh, going to be great. Francis Ford Coppola dropped a new mo- a new trailer for his newest movie that he has been working on Yes. for the longest time. Mm-hmm. Megalopolis, I believe, and it right. has Shia LaBeouf. Uh Sam Voigt. It has Adam Driver as the yep. main lead. Mm-hmm. Um, can't wait to not watch it. Yeah, I'm probably not going to catch it until could, it's on a streaming site. I can't somewhere. wait to watch a movie recap of it. All right, something like that. Yeah, sorry guys. Um, but you know what's something we will go watch? What's that? The live action He Man movie. You know why? Because Jared Leto is now Skeletor. Yeah, that's kind of a crazy casting. I respect it because I love Jared Leto. Regardless and things that he's done. Oh, really? I didn't realize you were a Jared Leto fan. I was a little, you know, uh, Requiem for a Dream. You know, I loved him in House of Gucci. Um, man, I, I genuinely think I only know him as the Joker in Morbius. Um, he wasn't a good Joker. Let's be very real, guys. No, okay? he was damaged. Yeah. That was good. That was Thanks, that man. was nice, man. Thanks, I like man. I like that. That was good. Um, and he wasn't a good morbius but he was a better morbius than joker but still not a good morbius Does that make sense um I'm fine with it I'll so got it. nothing but you know hopes for the man you know it, it could be great uh if he keeps putting out good music with 30 seconds to mars what the fuck am i gonna do get mad at him i can't he keeps putting out good music kiss my ass mm. sorry um you know what they just keep doing making good shit Sometimes you don't need a, a sequel or a trilogy or a squillogy, you know what I mean? Or a mm-hmm. d- or a fourth or a fifth. But you know what sometimes we need? Number six. And I'm not, this isn't Tropic <laughs> Thunder where we're talking about Scorcher 6 or Qu- Scorcher 7 with Ben Stiller. We're talking about the real shit. The real shit. The real cold stuff. The real Ice Age shit. It's officially been confirmed that they're working on an Ice Age 6, baby. And who yes, the fuck are. needs that? I do. Because <laughs> this is one of, in the conversations of the greatest animated series of all time, like movie series of all time, this is never gets brought up. Never. God damn it. Ice Age is one of the fucking greatest. Is it S-tier, Cars, no. Kung Fu Panda, Shrek? No, it's not. I will give you that. But God damn it, does Ice Age and Ray Romano not get enough love as a fucking A-tier Five fucking movies, dude. Dennis then, Leary came back incredible. for all six. Or it's all an five incredible movies. movie series. Dude. John Luis Ziamo got to come back and play Sid the Sloth for five movies, dude. It does not. Why does anyone care about Sid the Sloth? <laughs> that was a damn good Sid. They do this God every dang. year. Yeah, we used to make fun of Chad. That was a really, <laughs> that was a really good Sid. He's. We're already an hour into this. Chad is definitely not watching. We used oh, to make no, fun no. of Chad and be like, hey, and they do this to me every year. Why? Does anyone care about Chad oh, the no. Oh, fuck yeah. I miss you, Chad. Uh, but yeah, dude, I so say good. six. I'm fucking down. I'm down for it. I'll but, watch it. It's so disrespected, man. It doesn't get the love. You're absolutely right. I apologize. 
That's on me. Oh, that's my bad, dog. I will write them an email. Bro, I got heated. Yeah. First time in 90 episodes. No, shit. I raised my voice. No kidding, dude. Unless it's about The Rock. You know what I mean? That man does not get that fired up. I fuck with Ice Age. Hey, I fuck with Ice Age. I love Ray Romano. That's why we wrote. How many times yeah. I said, been called Everybody Loves Raymond? God dang. Hey, babe. Uh, a million. Uh, that's my Ray Romano impersonation. It's terrible. You know what's not going to be terrible? Now, listen. It's not going to be great. It's not going to be great. We know that. But it's going to be good. The Office reboot. Let's hang on. Hey, hold. Hang on. Stay with me. Focus. Focus. It's okay. New cast. Different synopsis. Some people might come back. It's okay. But we got to we got to we got to take a chance on the new cast. Because Viner legend, freakish star, Snowfall legend, Melvin Gregg is set to come in and set in this star of a fucking ensemble, baby. What are the other two actresses? That's right. Melvin Gregg, Chelsea Frey, and Ramona Young have been cast in the new Office series alongside uh, Dom Nall Gleason and Sabrina uh, Apachatore. Let's go, yeah. baby. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you don't remember what this is, the series follows the Dunder Mifflin documentary crew as they focus on a dying historic Midwestern newspaper and its volunteer reporters. So, yeah, this is going to be great. Uh, you, you're have... stoked about the Melvin Gregg casting. I don't personally know any of these actors. Um, you, the second you do any clip for this podcast in six months, because we have a huge back order, and I'm so sorry, Ray, for while you're editing this right now. I know we do. You're going to roast you... me in post, bro. No, it's not your fault. I'm not editing shit. Oh, you know? that was a shot. Well, no, it's Six not your month fault. backlog. Well, you what do... the fuck? Well, let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen. Ray still has Kite Man 3 through Finale. Uh, any turtle episode, if you would like any old football episode that we've done. That's any true, but I'm good clip. at podcast clips, man. That's the one thing I'm pretty good on. You are, you're damn good. <laughs> on. But oh, this is a topics episode. You're absolutely right. I apologize. This is completely separate than a reaction episodes. Hey Ray, so when you're doing this, just type in Mel- Melvin Gregg Viner, and you'll be like, oh my god, this is that guy. Um, not King Bach or King Batch cringe comedy. He was so actually cringe. a good one back in the day. Right when the the Paul brothers were hitting their rise, Melvin Gregg was still hitting that rise too. And then you know he just he did you know incredible things. You remember the uh the twins, the fucking the Hayes twins or some shit like that, something like that. They were handsome white kids. One of them got on a show with Melvin Gregg on Freakish, and it was oh, cool. it was damn good. Uh, it was a zombie show. A nuclear power plant went blew up, um, and they were just trapped into a school, and there were zombies and shit like that. And he was one of the, they were all kids oh, on detention, cool. um, and he survived the entire series until the very end. Even Liza Koshy was in it. Ah, I'm yeah. ruined. Nah, nah, man. Oh yeah, she sucked in it. She sucked. Yeah, she dies the last episode. Good. Guy comes in, and shoots her in the eye. I like this with an arrow. Yeah, it was. It was uh, I don't know, what's his fucking name? He was always one of those YouTubers I couldn't stand. Gary Busey's son. It was, his son played him. Oh, okay. As well, because he's not as crazy as Gary Busey, and he's mm. cognitive still because of that after the accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and I have a mutual love for not only the show, but characters from the show, such as mm-hmm. one of the greatest TV dads of all time, George Cooper. Of course. Uh, You're damn and, right. And speaking of George Cooper and Young Sheldon, they have now <laughs> released set photos from yes. George and Mandy's first marriage. Yes. And I'm happy for it. I love that there is a spinoff and more of the universe. Yep. But I look at these set photos. Uh, they already talked about how it's going to be more of a sitcom style it instead is. of a drama style very, Young Sheldon. The set photos look very mi- married with children. <clears throat> they are so... Big bang to me. I don't know. It feels like oh. regression. It feels like regression to me going back to the sitcom style because you're doing a disservice to the to the universe you built in Young Sheldon and like the well, no, relationships they, you built well, with the characters. Well, as they get older, they'll go to the same like shot frame style that they did Big Bang Theory, which obviously had 37,000 seasons yeah, for some I don't reason. Know. I don't like it. It feels like regression. I respect that. Because well, Big Bang is such a, such a tier below, two tiers below Young Sheldon. It has way more know? heart. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, right. It's, it it's just it feels wrong. I don't know because it's just a completely different style for all of these characters that you've done seven seasons of, and you know they have all these relationships, and now like me, mom might not be in it, Missy might not be in it, like Mary might not be in it that much. The yeah. only ones we know are uh, mom, Mandy's family is yeah, in it, which yeah, also yeah, Will so. Sasso. You are an absolute legend, my friend. Yeah, I, definitely, dude. You're so he's, dude, the, he's the absolute best. 
Um, I, I don't know. I'll watch it. I'll definitely catch it with my parents. Oh, uh, yeah. Laugh my ass off at it. But I can already say I'm not going to like it as much as Young Sheldon. Big facts. Hot take. Big facts. Uh... Now, I want to ask you about this because you actually went back and watched Dune 1 and 2. There was some Dune 3 news, apparently, and I have not watched one, and we walked out of the second one, and Ray went back and watched one and two, and was and his words and they're verbatim. fantastic. His words verbatim. If we watched the first one, we wouldn't have left because it was so damn good. Yeah, that would have been insane in the theater. Yeah. That, was yeah, that would have been crazy. It was good. Uh, so we have Dune 3 news, my friend. We what do? is it? What's on yeah. the rocket docket? Uh, well, Dennis Villanueva has said before that Dune Messiah is going to be his last one in the franchise. That's one they're working on, Dune 3. Yes. Uh, the script is actively being worked on currently. Um, he said they have a plan. They know how to handle the 12-year time jump um, because obviously there's a time jump where his Paul Atreides sister is born, and that's going to be played by Anna Taylor Joy, and yes. she showed up in like, Flashback memories yeah. or flash forward memories or whatever in uh, Dune Two, um, but yeah, he said he plans to set up the trilogy so that another director can potentially come in and take over and continue the story. So good, he, he's leaving. But I think Dune has just printed so much money that there's no way they end it. Especially they've got the TV show coming out. They got a video game coming out. Don't they have a fucking podcast coming out too? No, or is that that's just Rebel Moon? That's just that's, for the shitty Snyder. I think that's for just Rebel okay, Moon. Okay, I yeah. I, I could have swore I read something that they were gonna do something just off the lore, where it was just like one of the the mothers. Well, they definitely could be. Where it's just the mothers reading script, like and that would be something. dope. But Rebel yeah. Moon, that's cringe. That's bad. Um, yeah, no, where it's essentially like I would listen to a Star Wars podcast if it was someone from like the High Republic telling yeah. old stories from like Jedi, yeah, from yeah, Jedi, yeah. Uh, which they probably make that because they make Batman podcasts like that. They've yeah. made yeah, shit yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. They've probably done stuff. In them, Here's but. a fun fact. They did a podcast show with MGK, Avril Lavigne, Ian Dior, Trippy Red, Travis Barker, and I think Tommy Lee. That's a squad where it's like Tommy Lee plays the devil and they're all sent to hell and they have to like play to get out. And I think it, I'm pretty sure it stars in GK and Jaden. Uh, and it was in the middle of their punk tour where Avril Lavigne, Trippy, Ian, Jaden and MGK all went on tour together for like, I think seven mm-hmm. shows in the midst because all their tours lined up together a little bit in the midst of like, I think it was tickets to my downfall of MGK's tour when Avril Lavigne started to come back and make music again. But, uh, I listened to all eight episodes. They're like 35 minutes a piece. And it's like real sound, like them running through shit. It's like it, it immerses you in it. That's cool. Um, can't like do that. that for Rebel Moon. Zack Snyder, go no, fuck yourself. It sucks. Uh, but Dune, I would watch it. I would, Dune, I would, yeah, yeah, I would yeah. listen to I'm it. I'm down. I'm down. That's a solid audio book I could listen to. You know what I mean? Because um, I, I watched the behind the scenes and they were like letting MGK run with like a sound thing on his head and run around in like a giant like store, cool. like a giant like, like thing. Yeah, it was. They set up like a, not cool. an obstacle course, but like kind of like an off-brand set to like kind of get the sounds and things done and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was very impressive of how they yeah, did that's it. That's cool. Man. Um, King of Kings. We've got one last thing to talk about, and this is one of my favorite topics we've talked about in the last thirty episodes. Okay. The Oscar Isaac starring as Jesus Christ in the multiverse anime fucking King of Kings movie. Uh, so we got our first look at it. Uh, let, me get a little, let me get a little piece of piece. Well, it's 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 not impressive. It's it's, oh, it's about okay. what a Jesus movie would look like to yeah, you. Yeah. Um, but this brings up a good point. Perfect. Um, somebody tweeted. I will shamelessly read this tweet from at Mia Koopa. Uh, it says, "This is great because it means Oscar. Who? This is great because it means Oscar Isaac will have played Jesus, his father Joseph in Nativity Story in 2006, and Jesus's great great grandfather in Saban Nur." Ooh, in X Men Apocalypse. Yeah. So he's just kind of uh, hitting the trifecta here. Yeah, he is playing a lot of gods. I I did not know about either of those other two roles. Uh, well, in so it's kind of funny. Is Apocalypse in X Men Apocalypse the one with Evan Peter the new? X-Men so yeah, X-Men. I haven't I haven't watched any of that, and definitely haven't watched Nativity Story from yeah. two thousand six. He his the way he talked about working on X Men, he was miserable. He was like, I'll I never, can imagine. Uh, he didn't want to do superhero movies again, really? and stuff like that. And then, thank God he, he did. Feige, and then they were thank like, God he came back. Night. Yeah, dude, he was so thank good. Thank God, bro. Let's be very clear. And now he's quick. Jesus Christ. And now he's he's been Jesus. He's been Jesus, Joseph, of and uh, we love you, God. We love you, God. <sighs> that was the Jesus perfect. Christ. That is the perfect inter- impersonation of that. Yeah, that was really good, man. No fucking. I like that. Bro, we love you, God. 
How dare you, dude? Oh, yeah, dude. I'm pumped. Oscar Isaac can't do anything bad at the moment. Sorry. No, he's killing it. Yeah. Everything he's doing is great. Um, yeah, this King of Kings movie, it's a weird concept, but I don't know. It might be good. Who knows? You know who his best friend is? Pedro Jesus? Pascal. Oh, Pedro? How does he know Jesus? I don't know. It's Pedro Pascal. Um, but they're like, you know how like, have you seen random clips of like Jay Joe Hall and Ryan Reynolds together? Sure. And there's the two kids that can't sit still next to each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the same epitome of them together. Really? That's and cool. Oscar and uh, Pedro Pascal went, or Oscar, I was just like, stop touching me. He's like, I love you. He has a hug of me. It's the best, the best. shit in the world. Oh. I love it. It's the same like Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds, where they love, will fuck with each other. Mm-hmm. That's what that is. I love it. It's so good. Like he wore a shirt one time with Pedro's face and then Pedro wore a shirt with Oscar Isaac wearing the shirt with Pedro's face. And then Oscar Isaac wore the shirt of Pedro or Pedro Pascal wearing the shirt of him wearing. Yeah. Um, It was just iconic. You can't, you can't go wrong with it. Is it Pedro? It may not be Pedro. I'm thinking of a clip I saw of somebody accepting an award and saying, sorry for the shoulder thing. Uh, Kieran Culkin beat the shit out of me. Was that Pedro Pascal? Oh, I think so. I think it was Pedro, wasn't it? And, yes. And then they won. cut to Kieran Culkin with just dead face. Didn't I didn't th- crack a smile. I think so when he won for The Last of Us. Yeah, I think and, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Succession. Yeah, yes, dude. dude. Pedro Pascal, he's so care. And I've I've been getting into Game of Thrones, like I'm reading the book series, but then also like watching random clips on oh, TikTok. Man, dude. And he's like over and he's so fucking charismatic. And I love I'm I fall in love with him every every clip I see of him, man. And here's the thing, in I, anything, period. And I've been very adamant over the years. I have not been a Pedro Pascal fan. I didn't like him in the Equalizer too, and I didn't like him as the Mandalorian because they didn't give him FaceTime and he why? Just make it a note. Give give it the same dude that made Halo. You need to get Halo. You know what I mean? Give him shitty speaking roles and just let him in the suit the whole time. But you made me love him damn it you made me like pedro pascal universe you did it and now give us everything i'm fine with it being reed richards i was 100 percent fine with it but how dare you try to turn it around and go against james gunn and superman first family how about the first born huh how about the first born of krypton son jesus christ we love you god we love you james gunn i'm doug he's ray in saturday morning cartoons we love you jesus christ Hey, what happened? Why are those squiggles on the screen? Those are called end credits, Patrick. End credits? But I don't want it to end!